Hi, hope everybody's well and here we are on week 37 of our flags. So it was week 11 on the back that was the 3D origami butterfly which I know a lot of you really really enjoyed doing. Um, I know lots of people have made more than the ones that actually went on their flags. So I thought we'd go a bit 3D on the other one and when I was having a bit of a sort out of everything I have this um, brooch, this corsage brooch. <coughs> I can't remember where I've got it where I got it from. It was a long, long time ago. Um and I thought I'd use this as inspiration for today's flag. I think we get inspired by things all the time. So this is what I'm gonna use, which is um lengths of fabric that we're gonna do running stitch and so you create your ruffles and then we're gonna build it up and create a corsage or corsage or however you want to pronounce it. So pop that there. Right, so I've started off with a piece of wool um, that I've done my circle that's going to be my back in. It's probably just a tiny, tiny, a little bit wider than my um, cardboard backing, but that's fine because it's just going to get attached in the middle. So this one's going to be a bit different. I'm not actually going to do the flag shape. You can do if you want to, but I think I'm just going to make that and then it'll just get applied onto my flag. So what I need to collect together are um, a range of fabrics and then I've got a couple of bits that I'm going to do a bit of embellishing on the top with. Um, I've got machine cotton because a lot of this is just running stitch and then attaching it to this background. Um, I sort of think I know what I'm going to do. We'll see whether or not it works. So I've got um, a ribbon of This Is Liberty um, fabric. I've got a little bit of an edging because I quite like the texture with this and then I've just pulled out a few more bits of fabric um, and a bit of netting not quite sure what I'm going to use as I come to build this up but I've just pulled some bits and pieces together that I'm sure I'll have a little bit of a play with so I'm going to start off with my first ruffle which I decided was going to be the Liberty fabric you want quite a bit um, so I would say there I've got the right sir diameter of my circle is about ooh, eight centimeters and then my first length of fabric is 30 60 ish centimeters long it gets a bit thinner at one end so i'm just going to trim that down because I, I want it to be sort of the same thickness if possible at either end so it's got a rough edge to it and a knee edge so the knee edge is where i'm going to do my little running stitch so i've got single thread of machine stitching not stitching machine thread and all i'm going to do to start off with is just to start do a running stitch so i'm going to do it about a centimeter in length so if you've got your needle you're just going in and out a centimeter at a time so near this edge and back quarter of a centimeter from the edge of my fabric so I'm just going to go all the way to the end now what we'll then do is we'll open it up a little bit and then hopefully it'll go around the edge of my circle to create my first frill i was going to say thrill not, well it is a thrill to be stitching but we're creating a thrill let's see i just remember a comedian always used to talk about on the telly i can never remember what it was but it was about talking with you putting your teeth in i need to put my teeth in to talk properly either that or it was my grandma or granddad that said that i don't know if it's a yorkshire saying probably to do with that generation when a lot of grandparents used to have dentures remember my granddad had a glass by the bed that he used to keep his in terrifying he used to take them out oh scare the living daylights out of you right then so we pull our ruffle onto our piece of thread not thread thread right so what we've got to do now is to pull it out a little bit and we're going around the edge of our 
piece of fabric to give us our first edging. So leave your needle in. It's not pulled that all the way through, I don't think. Or I've got a knot in it. Oops. There we go. Let's trim that. Now let's pull that through again. I think I've still got it double. I don't want it double, I want it single. Let's pull that bit through. There we go. Cooking on gas. Don't know why that one doesn't want to go through. I've got a knot. That's why. Let's pull that out. Right, there we go. Right, pull that back through. So wherever we have our joins on each of the layers, the joins need to be in the same place for each piece. Now, I'm doing that thing again where I'm looking round and I've got no idea where my pin cushion's gone. There it is. Right, hold on. because I keep going and doing some sewing downstairs so I end up taking a tray of stuff downstairs with me and then it doesn't always come back so the frill just needs to just cover over the edge of our backing piece so pin that on there and then we just need to space it out as evenly as you can so that it goes all the way around and back to the beginning and just every so often try and keep it so it's the same distance away all the way around and then just pop a pin in just to hold it in place so it's a bit of faffing And then when you get back round, what you want to do is just overlap these slightly. So just take out your first pin, leave your thread in, just overlap it slightly. Now mine's a little bit narrower at this end, so make sure it's the outer edge that lines up. Because we're going to cover this up then with our next one. That's fairly even, I think. Another pin. There we go. Right then, so your thread that you've got with your needle, what we're then going to do is then just stitch this edge to the background. Where's that gone? There we go. So what you want to do is your little ruffles as you're going around, make sure that they all end up um, going, laying the same way down. And I'm going right at the edge of my fabric. I'm just doing a little running stitch that's going to hold them in place. The stitches don't need to be too close together because you still want that option to be able just to move things around a little bit. But this basically is just going to hold our first layer down. So you'll be able to feel with your fingers that you're sort of getting it in the right place. It's a little bit faffy, a bit fiddly. This first one is probably the harder one just to get going. I'm sorry I keep sniffing. But is I just sort of sit down here and start working. And I start sniffing. Might be allergic to sewing. <gasps> Can you imagine it? Oh my god. Right, so all the way around the edge. I'm liking this already. Just keep just adjusting your little ruffles. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly evenly spaced out. It's organic. Let's move a few of 
few of them just around that. So I hope you've been enjoying the flags. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed doing them. It's coming up with all the all the different ideas, especially after doing all the tags. I know some things might be a little bit of a rehash of something that we've done before. Hopefully there's enough variation to keep everybody entertained with some long and some short videos. Depends on how much time I've got as well, depending on how long I get to do. But also the project that I'm giving you to do. Sometimes I don't want to just sit and film myself doing the same stitch again and again and again. So it does jump a little bit. But hopefully you can just take from it what you want to take from it. I know sometimes we've got the luxury of being able to sit and do something all in one go. And then other times life just gets in the way. And you just need something that's just quick. So hopefully there's been enough variation of ones that are taking a little bit longer. And ones that are a little bit quicker. Right, so there's our first layer. So my next layer, I'm going to go with a bit of a contrast. I wanted a little bit of a um, a textured piece. So my last bit was 30 centimetres ish. This one, I'm going to go just over 30 because I want it to lift up a little bit. Um, I just need to trim the edge of this just so that it's all the same length. Got myself a new toy rotary cutter. Um, really struggled with rotary cutters for quite a while until a friend told me that you um, you can buy ones where you can swap the blade. So obviously you all know I'm a lefty. So most of them come with the blade on this side. So right-handed people can see it. And I always really struggled with the fact that I could never see what I was doing. But if you've got one that has a nut on it, you can swap the blade to the other side which means if you're left-handed, you've got one that works for you. This is a Fiskars one. I quite like it because the other one that I had had a little bit of a, um, a push clip and I always used to find it had a dead bit on it all the time. Whereas this one, I love it because you just pop it out and then press the button and it pops it back in again. It's very simple to use, quite nice. Um, I would imagine if, if you're quilters or you do a lot of stitching, that's probably nothing new to you at all, but... It was new to me, the fact that you could swap the blade over made a massive, massive difference. Massive difference. Right, same thing again. So I'm just going to go just inside, because this is an open weave fabric. I'm going right on the edge of the um, sort of the sealed bit. When it's an open weave fabric, they have sort of like a bit, it always feels a bit like, I mean, I don't know if they do, as if they run it through like a hot press or something. So I'm going to make my stitches this time a little bit smaller. So the smaller your stitches, the more stitches you do, the more ruffles you'll get. That's the theory anyway. I'm hoping this one will work because it is a slightly thicker fabric. But as you know, I don't tend oops, to test things out before we do it. There we go. don't tend to test things out so I think sometimes it's nice to take a risk we're not very good at taking risks we like to know that things are going to be successful and that they're going to work but actually I think sometimes it's quite nice just to have a go at something and sometimes it's more for it not to work it's how we learn new things. So I know with some of like the flags and things that I have set out and done and then I've had a look at what other people have done and have them posted and how people have taken things slightly differently or done a different twist on it or they hadn't got those materials or they didn't even like the technique but they had a little go and then attached it onto something else. I just find it fascinating how different people's responses are. To what I've set you to do now I'm wondering now whether or not I'll do a bit of a test with this 
might not need as much because it's quite thick fabric oh yeah I might not need as much so if you lay it on and just test it so I was going to go for double that but I don't think it's going to pull up so I think that might be enough I'm going to go with that yes I'm going to go with that so find my join See, made my join so good, can't even find it myself. Where's the join? Join, 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 join. There it is. So start on your join again. Put me next one. So this one wants to be slightly inside the one again that you've just done. So we're creating our ruffle. Play around, just fiddle with it. There we go. Lot. So play around with different fabrics if you've got them, different textures. I just want to go through that. There we go. Let's make it there. That's there, that's going to go there, and then that's going to bring me back around here. Right, this time I'm going to have to finish this one off, and then I'm going to have to put um, a little bit of new thread. In fact, what I might do is take that off, but leave the thread on, re-thread my needle, because then I can always adjust that if needed. it's really weird this light I have to put it on and then turn it off she says there we go. and then put it on again and then it does my different colors it's sort of it's one of the um, selfie lights but I just find it's really nice because it's a nice white light it just brightens everything up I keep thinking I should invest in a daylight um, lamp I've seen them at the shows and stuff and they do look really good right so same thing again just tack this one going around so you just have to work out where they need tacking because we're going to keep layering up things will get stitched again and again so don't panic if you haven't tacked it everywhere this is just holding it all in place so it doesn't fall to pieces so because this is a slightly thicker fabric I'm having just to do like little tacking stitches so just going up and down just every so often doesn't want to go through that really thick layer and you want to keep your stitching fairly near um, the inside edge because you want your ruffles to stand up now you can do as many ruffles as you want I suppose it depends on the size of the circle that you've chosen and also how thin or thick your fabrics are if you're thinning your fabrics you can do more Oops. and keep it fairly evenly spaced as you're going around think about your color combination so always have a look at all your flags that you've done see what colors you've been using and are you drawn to particular colors I tend to always have a look at mine and just think right what haven't I used in a while just because I think sometimes what can happen is when you're not thinking subconsciously you can always end up going for a very similar colour palette all the time 
and you want to put a bit of variation into what you're doing. Okay. Right, moving right around the other side. Right, then we can start thinking about layering things up. So I could do a few more layers of ruffling, but I think I'm going to work on my centre bit next. So I've gathered together some bits and pieces, so I've got a little bit of tool, so I thought that would be quite nice. And something that's a bit silky, so again I've got a different texture. And then I've got some patterned fabrics. So I was just going to do this black and white to start off with. And then you, you make that mistake, well not a mistake, but you start looking through your fabrics and going, oh, but I've got that, and oh, and I've got that. I could use that. You go down the rabbit hole. That's one of my favourite sayings at the moment. Going down a rabbit hole. Right, so back to the beginning. So now I've got that and I sort of know how tight I want that to be. Just thread another needle. There we go. Right, that's going to go that. Take that pin out. Right, and then I can just pop that through. So I want to know where I want that to be, I can just tie that one off. So this is the one that I had done as my running stitch to create my ruffle. So cut that one off and then I've got my needle. I can trim that now. But don't worry about this joiny bit because we're going to do like a little um, like ribbony dangly bit. Right. Drop some of these bits off. Okay, dokie. Right that all sorted down. Right, so what I want to do next is I want um, a little tooly bit in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to do, it's a little bit like a Suffolk puff. I'm gonna do, well Suffolk puffs are going to form quite a basis for the next little bit that I'm going to do. So need to create a circle. So easiest ways to do this is fold it into quarters, fold it into eighths and then just work out your radius with your thumb and I then tend to hold it in the middle and then just curve it around. I do this if I'm baking and it sort of gives you a fairly good circle. So what I'm going to do now is a neutral thread So I'm going to create a little bit like a Suffolk puff. I'm not going to worry about folding the edges in. All I want to do is a big running stitch around the edge. Let's pull that through. So this bit's all going to get hidden. Back to the beginning. There we go. Okay. So what I want to be able to do, I'll pull that together, scrunch that out. So this is going to then go in the middle of my little bit so far. 
So what I can do then is just to hold this in because I don't want to hold the edges because I want it to lift up. So I can just pop a couple of stitches straight through the middle. There we go. So I'll just hold that in place. Oh, tie that off. Right, so tie off my needles. So you could make this super neat if you just cut your edges really, really straight. You'll end up with a really neat edge to your corsage. Um, don't know why I have to say that in a funny voice. Um, or you can go super rough and ready and textured and all sorts. So I've got my textured edges. So each of the layers just hides the edge of the previous one. So that's where we're up to so far. Okay, right, so I've now got two shapes. So I've got a button that I want to go in the middle. And then I've got a ringed shape over the top. But I think I want to cover my button. Now I was going to go with those fabrics, but actually I think I've changed my mind now. I don't like that fabric. Let's have a look what I've got. I do a pinky colour. What we got? So this was me not thinking this through at all properly. Well, I had thought it through and then I sort of changed my mind. Do I go with a bit of a contrast maybe? That might be quite nice. It's got a bit of a pink in from the last one. So what I want to do now is I want to create a Suffolk puff that's going to go over this and just wrap it. So Suffolk puffs tend to be half the diameter of the circle that's being created so you want to cut out a circle that has a diameter twice that of your button at least it doesn't matter if it's not quite right because then we just don't need to pull it in as far so that's going to go around there okay right so I need to get my circle so if I fold it into quarters fold it into eighths I always get my thumb on there just to sort of get my radius and then just do a little curve. It's never a hundred percent perfect but I don't think that's a bad circle really. So grab my thread. So again we don't need to turn the corners under because this is going to go um, on top of what we've done. So same thing again just a little running stitch oh, I think this needle is getting ready for a new needle it is important that you do change your needles every now and again they are a little bit like scissors they do get a little bit blunter over time I always forget that until I get myself out some new needles and then it's like aha that's why everything was just is hard. It's making my life far too difficult. So a little running stitch around the edge. Start making your little shower cap. So there's loads of different things that you can do with this. It could just be felted shapes that you cut out. Um, it could just be buttons and fastenings. So I'm just going to pop my button in the middle and then pull it tight shut and then just do a few stitches going over the gaps just to pull it all together. Yeah, this needle is definitely blunt. Oh, that's kind of cute. So you could have put a little bit of padding in there. I never thought about that because that's quite flat. But I am going to put that on the top. Oh, that's okay. It's fine, I'll just go with it. 
all I'm thinking is I could have just popped a little circle of um, wadding or a bit of tissue or something like that or even just another little bit of fabric just over the top just to pad it out ouch not a little bit oh the needle is definitely still sharp if you want to stick it in your finger right there we go now let's tie that one off I'm not going to attach this yet because I want to do something to my little ring so there's all sorts that you can do with your ring you could just wrap it wrap it in fabric you could wrap it in thread um, you could crochet around it whatever you fancy doing so I'm going to pick out a colour go that little light I'll go with that one or we'll go with the lilac I don't quite like the lilac I've done quite a bit of mucky pink right what I'm going to do shall I crochet I'm just going to cut that off there I didn't want to cut that off there let's leave it on right so I'm going to crochet now I am not a crocheter for those people that are crocheters out there so this is sort of like my cacandered way of doing crochet so you need to make yourself a little loop and then pop the thread through to give you a slip knot okay little slip knot goes on your crochet hook and then what we need to do is we need to attach it to our um, ring so what you want to do oops pull that a bit tight on there is I'm left-handed obviously so I'm going to go through my hoop grab the thread which takes me a while to get the tension right on this thread and then bring that through the oh she says this is what I mean by cacanded right come on I knew you can do this right here we go through the loop through the hole sorry grab a loop grab a loop and pull it through the hole so is this bit I find really really hard just getting going you are a crocheter out there you are probably absolutely killing yourself laughing so through the hoop pull that back I'm gonna start blaming my tools in a minute right I am I'm gonna use a different crochet hook right pop it on there right through there hoop on there and through oh my god what is going on come on just go through the hole yes we're through and then go over the top and hook it and through yes we're off right we're on so then you go through the hole over the top and then pull that through the two that you've got on your hook so you go through the hook through the hoop grab it over the top grab it and pull it through the two that's on your hook and then you just keep going through over the top and through now I would imagine if you are a crochet person that firstly you're probably just absolutely wetting yourself but I have to say I'm quite proud of the fact that I've, I've sort of begun to master this I'll say master that's a very strong word and um, I've struggled in actually having a go at doing crochet because the very first time that I did it was on a workshop with a beautiful gorgeous lady called Judy 
who was teaching us how to crochet. She crochets round massive sculptures and things. Absolutely stunning work. And we did a workshop with her. And I could not get my head around this at all. Both my kids could. Both my kids came on the workshop. They could do it. I really couldn't. So the fact that I know that beginning bit was not very professional. Um, but the fact now that I can actually just crochet around a hoop. I'm just really pleased that I persevered with it. You don't have to do this. I've done them before and there's previous videos where I've done a blanket stitch around a ring. But like I say, you could just um, wrap it with thread. You could wrap it with fabric. You could just paint it a different colour. Hello, Duncan. He's making himself known. I'm assuming that he's run out of food downstairs, which tends to be what happens. But this is the bit I've always struggled with crochet, is what you do with both your hands and all your fingers. And it does take me a while. I don't even know if I'm doing this properly. But it looks okay. And it sort of works. I'm almost an amazing crocheter. I've still got bangles that she crocheted snowflakes inside for um, Christmas decorations that go on my tree every year. I can't believe I just mentioned the C word. Oops, gone wrong. Right, let's just go back. Not quite sure what's gone wrong there. Oh no, that's right. It's because I've lost the tension on my fingers. There we go. I've done that. I'll take that through. That's it. So you could stack buttons. You could, you could do anything. I know you'll all have all sorts of things in your stashes that you can use for this. It's just that starting off bit. Actually, so even if I say so myself, this is not too shabby. Okay, I've got quite a long video this week. I didn't realise it was going to be this long. You've possibly been fast forwarding. Not very exciting watching somebody trying to crochet. I have to say. I can't believe that we're like, it's like September. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Glad you're still with me. You're still going ahead. I know some people have just watched all the videos. They've not actually done anything. They've just enjoyed watching them. A few people, I know, are bang smack up to date. Well done you. A few people are a bit behind doesn't really matter you've got the videos there the idea is they fit in with your life I just feel very lucky that I'm able to do this and share it all with everybody right we're getting back round to the beginning and then this is when we need to finish it off so when we get back to the beginning this is the bit that I'm never 100% sure that I'm doing this right. In my head I think I am, but it also it always sort of works. So once you've got back round, you need to go back through your first... I can find it. There it's it. Your first stitch will be a little loop. Back round, there we go. So I'm going back through my first one. There we go. Grab hold of that. Bring that through. So you bring that through both. Oops. Bring that through. I know, I'm thinking exactly the same, Duncan. Bring it through both and then get that and bring it back through. And then trim it and pull that through. There we go. Well, that's not too bad. That 
that's all right I don't mind that that's okay right so this is now gonna go on top of my um, little button so I'm just going to tie that as a little knot and I can trim it off there we go so then this is going to go on here so to fasten it on all I'm going to do don't need to fasten it on everywhere obviously it's a hard button I could have taken the button out and I could have fastened it onto the fabric beforehand but all I need to do is just go through the fabric come up in the middle and just tuck it down and then just move it on a bit further hello Go through the fabric. Oh, hello. You come say hello to everybody. Hmm? Hello. Yes, you're in the way now. I'm okay. I'm just going to sit there. Okay. Sit there on my desk. So let's make sure that's in the middle. I'll just sit there and just have a wash. That's exciting. Yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm attaching it to the piece of fabric that I've done as my Suffolk puff around my button. Don't want to run out of thread. It probably would have been easier if I had um, put some stuff in underneath it might have made it a bit easier just to stitch on Duncan you need to come out of the way people do not want to see you well they might do no we're not going that way come on no back this way come on off you go Okay, so I've gone all the way around, so I've just attached that on. So that's not going to move, just get it in the middle. Right, and then just tie that off. Now if you wanted to, you could go full and elaborate. So around the edges here, I could put buttons or beads to decorate the edges. You could put dangly bits on it. Absolutely anything. Kind of cute. Quite liking all the different textures. Right, so then I need to fix that onto there now. So get a thread, needle and thread. So what I'm going to do this time is going to go from the back up through the front, and I'm going to go through the edge of the bit of fabric. So I'm going to come up from the back up through the edge of the fabric and then back down so this is the fabric that's on the edge of the button and what this will do then is this will start just really pulling it all together so I'm just coming up from the back up through the edge of my button and then back down and then when you give it a pull it just pulls it all together so probably every centimetre or so just up from the back up through that edging bit of fabric so up through the edge there and back down and the last little bit we need to do is it depends I suppose on your piece um, as to whether or not you can see that original gap mine actually it sort of disappeared I can't really see it but it just would be nice to it sort of acknowledges where the bottom is I'm 
me all the way around. Think so. Yep, I think that's all the way around. Right now, where was my joiny bit? Not there, not there, not there. Can't find it. Turn it around. Such good joining, I can't even see where the join is. Oh, is that it there? That's it there. Around the bottom. Let's go through there so then I'm at the bottom bit. Okay, okay. Right, so go and lost it again. No, no. There, that's my joiny bit. There at the bottom. So I was gonna grab myself another little button. What have I got? No. Dead like the blingy bling bling. Just want to be yellow. No. Never the right one when you need it. Oh, go for that one. That's quite nice. Right, so what I'm going to do then is I trimmed off a little bit of my Liberty fabric. So I'm going to choose an area and just create myself a little ribbon. Bring that down. There we go. That's going to go there. And then I tuck that in at the bottom. Stitch that up. Ooh, needle's not liking that. There we go. Through. Oh, it's because I'm going through that really thick edging. Probably should have done it with my thicker cotton. So I might go over that with a thicker cotton. But actually, I might use the lilac. I've still got that on a needle, I think. Right, that's got it held in place. Let's tie that off at the back. Oh, oh just drop the needle on the floor. I thought I'd still got this on a needle. Oh no, it's got to crochet it. That's why it's not on a needle. Right, hopefully this one will go through it. Oh God, getting really, really knotty. Oh my goodness. Come on, Anne. There we go. Come on. Thank you. Right. Really don't like going through that thick fabric. That's it. I only need to do it a couple of times, so using my cutting mat to press it through. I'm assuming this is where actually using thimbles would help. I don't understand thimbles at all. I've never, I've got some gorgeous thimbles. I've just never been able to use them. I think it's because it's just another thing on your fingers. I know, I'm coming in a minute. Such a bossy boy. There we go. Right, we're just about done. Gosh, that's been a mammoth one this week. Apologise for my chuntering. Oh, bloody Riley. Right then. So, 
here we go. That's just going to get glued on. I'm quite pleased with that. Oh, that's quite cute. Kind of cute. Trim it, trim those little bits. So I'm not going to do a tassel on the flag of this one because I've got my little dangly bit there. So you could turn it into a brooch if you wanted to and pop that straight on the back. But I was just going to do what I normally do, which is glue my edges together. There we go. And then I'm going to go for a big splodgy glue. Massive splodgy glue. That's going to have to be left to dry my table before I hang it up. Check we've got it the right way around. Give it a good press. And there we have it. Ta-da! A textured corsage. Just taking inspiration from a brooch that I bought many, many moons ago. So I really, really hope you enjoy that. Thank you if you're still with me. Um, that took some doing. So happy Friday and I'll see you next week. Bye.